you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Tonight, we are going to speak on the subject of God cares for you. God cares for you. Father, thank you uh, for just the week. Uh, God, thank you that we can come on a Wednesday night, and God, we can kind of get that uh, midweek, just, uh, you know, just word from you, God, and and encouragement, Lord. I want to encourage our people in the faith uh, tonight. And God, we do pray for the sick. God, we pray uh, for those who are hurting, cancer, and just other things. And uh, God, we just uh, give you this time. Uh, Lord, I pray that you just speak through the word. God, I pray that you just be with us tonight in a special way. Thank you for our WANA program and our youth discipleship. And uh, Lord, just again, uh, your spirit that is here. Uh, So God bless this time that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll give you uh, the three points if you picked up an outline. We always have the outlines in the back there uh, so that you can follow with us. Does anybody need an outline? Lonnie's right there and he could bring them to you real quick. Anybody need an outline? Anybody? All right. Number one, God's peace in your life. God's peace in your life. Number two, God's protection from the enemy. God's protection from the enemy. And number three, God's promise of deliverance. God's promise of deliverance. God cares for you. Bible scholars believe Moses wrote Psalm 91 because all he had went through leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Others believed uh, it was another Psalm of David, which there are many Psalms of David, Uh, The central idea of this psalm is the dangers of life as we know it. We all know how dangerous life has become in our world today. You are truly not safe anywhere because of how crazy people are uh, and because we live in a fallen world. But as Christians, we should not live in fear uh, because we know who we belong to and we know where we are going when our life ends. The psalmist emphasizes the importance of living a life of trust, confidence, and victory because God is our refuge and our strength. Let's look at this beautiful psalm uh, that should minister to our souls tonight. Number one, God's peace in your life. God cares for you. Verse one, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when it says dwells, we know dwells is like a dwelling place, uh, maybe in a, a youth term, uh, a hangout, okay, where, where, where folks hang out, uh, in the secret place of the Most High. And we know the Most High is God, um, but when it's talking about the secret place, I think it has two connotations there. One, he is talking about the spiritual world, okay? You cannot see the spiritual world. But folks, I know when something's of the Spirit. In the second place, he who dwells in the secret place, I also believe it means God's presence. Okay, God's presence. And I am telling you, uh, there is not a better place to be than in God's presence. That's why I like to come to church. That's why, you know, Sunday mornings uh, with our music, I always get here early on Wednesday night, and I listen to our praise team practice. And I'm just telling you folks, uh, they are serious about what they are doing. Uh, the Spirit of God is here in the practices. And, and so uh, the psalmist here is just talking about the importance of being in the presence of God. And it, it is a wonderful thing. And shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you think of a shadow... Uh, Of course, we know what light and shadows mean, uh, but this also talks about the light, and and what I think he is talking about here is safety, okay? When we are in the shadow of God's presence, we are safe. I remember as a kid, uh, we lived a block from a grocery store, and every once in a while, my mom would forget to buy bread and we always took our lunches. When we were in grade school, we took our lunches. I mean, we didn't eat in the cafeteria or anything like that. 
and I really didn't like it, all right, when she said, Mike, it's dark already. You need to run down, you need to run to the store and get some bread. She'd give me the money, and I'd walk out of my house like I was Mr. Cool. You know, I mean, I'm guessing I was probably 10 or 11 years old, and I'd walk, and when I got past, there was a bush on the corner of our house. When I got that, I would sprint all the way down the street because I was afraid of dogs and other things because it was dark. And then I'd turn the corner, and the, the, the store was right there, and I'd start walking again like I had confidence, all right? And that, that's just a, you know, an experience of how things can scare us and situations can scare us. But folks, God is always with us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. His presence is always with us. And I think that should encourage you as a Christian. There is no place you go that God's not already there. Have you thought about that? No place you go that God's not already there. He created everything. Then verse 2 says, I will say, say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. And we know what a refuge is, okay? It's, it's a place, uh, you know, of, of where uh, we can go. And it's a place uh, where uh, in, in the fortress there is also. I mean, when you remember the forts, all right, the old, the old things, the, the, the Calvary deals and the Indians are running and all they're, they're coming after them and they open the gates and the Calvary run into that gate and they're protected by that fortress. Our refuge, folks, is God. Our fortress is God. So when I think of that, and the, the truth of it is, folks, we should not fear anything. There should be no fear in our lives uh, because God is our refuge and he is our fortress. And my God in him, I will trust. Folks, we started trusting God at the point of salvation. And I am telling you, we need to keep trusting him in all situations of life. And there's so many situations that, you know, they, sometimes life throws us curves. You know, we could be fairly healthy and go for a wellness check and you know, we all at once, he just, you know, we, the doctor can say, ah, we got some irregularities in, in your blood, you know, and they start running tests and, and they say, you know, this, you know, this, this is not good. And they keep, and, and to make a long story short, in some of the times uh, you could have cancer in your life, you could say, you know, you, you do have some form of cancer, Okay. Folks, I am telling you, God always already knows that. Okay, He's going to help you. He's going to get you through that, uh, and He He is He is worthy of our trust, and He is going to take you and walk you through those hard times. Verse three: Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. And folks, Satan is out there. Okay, man, Satan messes with your head. Uh, Satan will bring thoughts into your head. Uh, a lot of times it's a reaction to news like that. You know, they'll say, you know, well, my mom died of cancer. Uh, I had an uncle that died of cancer. I had another, you know, and you just go through these thoughts thinking, man, I'm going to have to go through that. And folks, Satan loves to take the peace away from Christians. Okay, he'll use anything, he'll use anybody to to take that peace away in our lives. And uh, you just, you have to acknowledge and you have to know, folks, we, we need to be able to discern, okay, uh, God's presence from Satan's, uh, you know, attacks. Verse 4, And he shall cover you with his feathers, and other, under his wings you shall take uh, refuge. You know, I think of the, you know, a, a bird or a, Let's just take a robin, for instance, and they've got those eggs, you know, in, in the nest there, and, you know, you're, you're able, maybe sometimes it's low enough to see or even watch, you know, the mother sitting on those eggs. And, and you know, one day, you know, you, you look out there and there's these mouths up there just going like this looking for, and, and folks, that's what, that's what, you know, mothers do. Uh, it's, it's 
just like God is just watching over you, okay? And, and he, he covers you uh, with his wings. Um, I think another deal there is possibly travel grace. You know, we all travel and we all go places. Uh, you know, we're, we're fixing to take off ourselves. And to me, the most dangerous road that we travel on is I-10. Once we get down to the coast and we go I-10, if you go 70 miles an hour, they will blow your doors off, okay? And I'm talking trucks, I'm talking cars, just whee, whee, whee. And, and what Lord and I do, you know, every time we leave, every, whether, you know, where are we at? at? If it's the second day or the third day, we just start and we ask for God's uh, grace and, and his wings to cover us. Verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by the day or the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays in waste at noon. And folks, when you think about that, uh, that's, that's Satan, okay? When you look at verse 5 and verse 6, Satan throws things at you. Uh, he wants you distracted. He wants you to fear. Uh, you know, he, he just, he's just that way. And folks, uh, God is our refuge and our strength. And we can have the peace of God in our lives. Hold your finger there and go to Philippians chapter 4 with me. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4, verse 4. Philippians 4, 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And folks, we of all people, Christians should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Okay? And not just happy. We should be joyful, rejoice uh, in all situations of life. Let your gentleness be known to all men, for the Lord is at hand. And the gentleness has to do with meekness, okay, meekness. And we as Christians, we need to be meek also. We don't need to get rattled, okay. We don't need to act like God isn't aware of this situation, we don't need to act like God's not in control of this situation, okay? God is there. He is in control. Then it says, be anxious for nothing. Anxious, another word is worry. Do not worry about anything, okay? Even Jesus himself taught that uh, in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, and he tells us not to worry. I truly believe worry is a sin. I really do. L worry. If you are worrying about things, you are not trusting God. You are not putting your faith and trust in God. I know you're saved, but the best description of worry, I heard a man tell me one time, it's like a rocking chair, okay? You making a lot of motion, but you are going nowhere, all right? There's no reason to worry about things, okay? We need the peace of God in our lives and we know that God gives us that peace. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Look at that word, folks. Everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And folks, when you talk about prayer, that is so, so important. And supplication, that's praying for others also. And folks, it's hard sometimes with thanksgiving. God does not put you through misery just to put you through misery. He doesn't allow these things to happen. He has a point and a purpose for everything that he, he allows that comes into your life. So, and, and I heard another preacher say one time, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger, okay? And, and we find strength in these times, in these challenging times that we have. And then verse 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Folks, the peace of God is something that every Christian should seek after. Okay, the peace of God. That's when you lay your head on the pillow at night, and I know if you're like me, you say your prayers. If you're like me, you ask yourself three questions. Am I right with God before I go to bed? Am I right with my, my family, and I'm, am I right with my fellow man? And I'm telling you, you can ask Lori. I mean, there's times that we'll start talking, and she'll, she'll just tell me the next day, you did it again. 
what? We were talking and you fell asleep. It was four minutes, Mike. Four minutes. You can't talk to me five minutes. I said, amen. The peace of God's on my life. All right. I always quote her scripture. All right, there. But there's, I'm, I'm not kidding you folks. There's nothing better than having the peace of God in your life. And look what it says, which guards our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ. That Holy Spirit in our hearts is something that gives us peace. And folks, Jesus is already there, but the battle is in our minds. Satan wants to mess with our minds. Satan wants us to tell us, man, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. You, you know, and, and he just tries to amplify bad stuff. So I'm telling you, folks, according to Psalm, and God is our peace. Man, he was called the Prince of Peace, folks. So God, you can have God's peace in your life, and you can know that God cares for you. Number two, the protection from the enemy. The protection from the enemy. A thousand may fall at your side, verse 7, and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. When I was thinking of the thousand may fall at your side, I'm thinking of the Red Sea, okay? And man, Moses and the children of Israel, and they come up there and they said, man, they just start griping and complaining. Why didn't you just leave us there? At least we had a roof over our head. At least, you know, you bring us out here to die, okay? These Egyptians, they're, they're you know, they're on their chariots and they're coming towards them towards them there's each cloud of dust from all that was going on but you know what god had a plan god had a plan and we know of the results of that but it shall not come near you only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked folks there are times in our lives that it seems like the wicked are winning the battle winning the battle but I got news for you, folks. God is in control. God takes care of his people. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Notice how much that is like verse 1. And why, why do writers uh, you know, do that? Why do they put some of the same language, some of the same words in there? It's always for emphasis emphasis the most high that means no one is higher than god no one is stronger than god no one can take god's place and then he mentioned the dwelling place again uh and folks there's there's two ways that you can dwell with him and i know you know this okay through prayer man you can dwell with god in prayer and in bible reading you can dwell with God in your Bible reading. And, and so many times, scriptures, matter of fact, that's what the Psalms were. The Psalms were songs. They were songs of comfort, uh, psalms of a, encouragement, uh, psalms, uh, you know, man, a lot of times when you're down, man, there's so many psalms that you can read that'll just pick you up. Of course, everybody knows Psalms 23, Psalm 27. There are so many, Psalm 61, uh, Psalm, uh, you know, the one we have tonight, 92, and that's what he's saying. Man, just go back, go back to your dwelling place. Look at verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any uh, plague come near you in your dwelling. And when I think of plagues, I think of Pharaoh, okay? And Moses said, man, you need to let my people go. You need to let them go. So what did God do? Ten plagues. And Pharaoh was so stubborn. But the, the children of Israel, through all of that, were protected. Okay? They were protected. The plagues that were given to the Egyptians had no effect on the children of Israel. Verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And again, you know, I think this is even a, a prophetic uh, verse here, talking about Jesus and, and God protecting Jesus himself. But I think also when it talks about this, uh, he shall give uh, his angels 
I believe that each one of us have a guardian angel. That there is an angel assigned to us that follows us around. And I, I've, I've seen, you know, I, I, I love to ride motorcycles, and I've got a deal, uh, you know, on my motorcycle that says, don't drive faster than your angel flies. Okay? Now, if you're being reckless and you're just being an idiot about that, then I, you know, I'm, I, I think you're kind of on your own when you make dumb choices like that. But I'm simply saying, uh, we, you know, God assigns angels to us to protect us. And it says in verse 12, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you shall dash your foot against the stone. I remember Stephen and I was talking. It's, it's been several years ago, and he was talking about how he was on the interstate, and uh, him and his wife, Denise, was going, and they were going on where a bridge was, and this semi just starts going over there. And he kept going further, and he got right next to the, di you know, to there where the, he thought, man, we're going to hit this, and all at once, he got away from that semi. What do you think was there? Well, if I believe that guardian angel had stepped outside their car and said, not today, not today. And, and I do. I think God keeps us from accidents, okay? I think God protects us. He sends those angels uh, to watch us. Verse 13, and you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. And again, that doesn't mean you know, if you're in Africa on some safari, you walk up to the lion and slap him. I mean, you, you are a, you're, you're dumb is all I can say. That's the nicest thing I could say about that. My mom didn't like me to say this stupid word, okay? Oh, I just said it. But I'm simply saying, when I look at those things, I, I, I see the word serpent there, okay? And we know what the serpent does, folks. Uh, the serpent, he's like a what? Roaring lion seeking someone to devour. But God's protection is upon us. God's angels are around us. God uh, will, will watch over us 24-7. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel 17, go with me there. 1 Samuel 17, and of course we know what was going on. You know, Israel and the Philistines were on one side and they're on the other and you know David was watching sheep and uh, you know his brothers were in war because he was the youngest and his dad said hey you know back then they didn't have chow halls and things like that for military folks the families were the one that took took food uh, to the soldiers there and he told his, his dad told him hey man go take your brother some food and see how things are going and he gets out there and he he, he looks up and he's hearing this big giant out there. Uh, the Bible says nine feet, nine inches tall, okay? And he's cursing Israel. And David, you know, he just, little guy, ruddy guy, all right, it just made him mad, okay? He said, why are y'all putting up with that? Even his brother said, hey, man, shut up. You, you're just a kid. What are you doing? You know, you're not going to go out there and do he said, I can't believe you're, you're sitting here let's, letting this guy talk about our God like that. What are you going to do? He said, well, I'm telling you, we need to do something about this. And one of his brothers looked at him, and I'm paraphrasing here, you go do something about it. And David said, I will. And, and anyway, you know the story. Saul tries to put his armor on him and all this. And David just says, listen, I'm telling you, this ain't right. He went, got a slingshot. He explained to him, yeah, man, I done killed a bear. I done, you know, I've, I've already killed wild animals. And they're all going to say, yeah, right. The, you're going to be in big trouble. So he gets those five smooth stones. And I'm telling you, he runs towards Goliath. He was mad. This, this, this giant was cursing his God. Now look what it says in verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Listen, folks, we are God's children. He is our heavenly Father. And he says, 
uh, the gods of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and will strike you and take, and I will, and I will uh, give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts on the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Folks, he was defending the name of God. He was defending God, Jehovah, of this Bible. And it says, uh, and uh, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. So what happened? Man, he, you know, you know, Goliath fall him, and he just said, are you kidding me? Would you get this kid out of here? And David kept running at him, and man, he had that slingshot, and he hit him right between the eyes. Boom, to the ground he went. Listen, folks, I'm telling you, when God's on your side, when God tells you, hey, man, go into battle. And folks, I know today it's not us, you know, we're not charging battles. We're, you know, I mean, I know our military does and they have guns and they're well trained and all of that. But I tell you what it is, our battle is a spiritual battle. And we should not fear Satan. We should not fear uh, evilness and, and, and darkness. Okay, I mean, we should stand and we should fight. Why? Because the battle is the Lord and God protects, uh, protects His children. Well, the last thing I want you to see, not only God's peace in your life, God's protection from the enemy, God's promise of deliverance. And it's like I said Sunday, folks, when God promises something, it's going to happen. Look at verse 14. Because he set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. Folks, I'm telling you, God knows where you're at. The Bible even says uh, he knows the hairs on your head. He knows everything about you. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Call upon me. That's prayer, folks. And God answers. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And folks, uh, trouble comes in all kinds. Sometimes it's financial trouble. Sometimes it's health trouble. Sometimes it's family trouble. Sometimes it's marriage trouble. Sometimes it's kids' trouble. Sometimes it's grandkids' trouble. But I'm telling you, God is with us. God promises to deliver us. And when it says, with a long life, I will satisfy him. Um, I was thinking about this this morning when I was going back over this. I was just thinking, you know, I'm, I'm 64 years old. And, uh, you know, I, I've had a great life. I really have. I was raised by Christian parents. Uh, I've been in the ministry 42 years, you know, and my goal is to hit 50. And I'm not saying I'll retire then. I'm simply saying I want to, I really pre- hope God lets me to serve him for 50 years. And I look at my life and I look at, back at all that God has allowed me to do. And I'm telling you, if I died today, this man, uh, if, and, and they're not going to. They're not going to open the coffin because, Lord, we have a pact that you're just not going to open. You know, if, if anything, I'll put that button on the side that has my laugh in it, you know, where I just laugh because, you know, I want everybody to remember the happy times and the joyful times uh, that we had together. And uh, I, I would just be totally at peace with God, all right, even if he chose uh, to end my life soon. And that's what he is talking about, that uh, I am... Let me put it this way. I am not going to die one day before God's plan. Okay, God has a plan. And let me give you a stat, okay? 100%. If Jesus doesn't come back, you're going to (laughs) die. Okay? And the way to not fear death is to have life. See, a lot of people want to say, man, I I, I just want to party. I just want to have life. Folks, you truly can't have life until you have taken care of 
eternity. I did that when I was 22 years old, folks. And I'm telling you, God knows the day of my death. I'm not going to be any sooner. I'm not going to be any later. And by the way, all of you who are late, you're not going to be late for your death or your funeral, okay? You're going to be on time. God is always on time. But I have no fear because it doesn't matter whatever situation I'm in, God will deliver us. Last one, Psalm 121. Psalm 121. I love this psalm. I will lift up my eyes into the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. See, man will let you down. Okay? Man and woman will let you down. People will let you down. God will never let you down. And you say, well, he let me down. No, he didn't give you what you wanted. Okay? God is sovereign, folks. God knows what's best for you. And there's sometimes, especially when death rattles the door, we think God is mad at us. No, folks. Our help comes from the Lord. And my, I just don't understand why in the hardest and most difficult time, we run from the very presence of the one that can help us the most. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Folks, he's always awake. His prayer line is always open. He always wants to talk to his children. He always wants to communicate with his children. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. And folks, there is a huge difference. When it's hot, what are you doing? If you're really, really hot, what are you looking for? Shade. And shade makes a huge difference between what's really hot and what's just kind of hot. And, and God takes care of that. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Again, protection. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Will you remember that? The Lord will preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Once saved, always saved. The Lord shall preserve our going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. You know what he's going to do, folks? He's going to get you home safely. He's going to get you home. I don't know about you, but that encourages me. It really does. It means basically, you know what? As a Christian, as a believer, as, as a lover of God, I shouldn't fear, I shouldn't worry about anything. And folks, we're just, we're just long for the ride, okay? Enjoy the ride. Father, thank you. Thank you that you care for us. And God, I th really don't think we understand how much you care for us. So much that you sent your son to die for us. And God, I just thank you for that. God, I thank you that we can have the peace of God in our life. And God, I pray that everyone here has that and experiences the peace of God in their life. God, I pray and thank you for your protection against the enemy. Lord, the enemy doesn't like us. Matter of fact, the enemy hates us. But God, we are under your divine protection. God, you protect us even with your angels. And God, I pray that when we feel bombarded, that we will go to that secret place, that we will pray and we will praise and we will worship you in our hearts. And God, we just thank you for the promises of God. It's yes, amen. And God, we just thank you that we, we have all this in heaven too. God, what a, what a wonderful thought that is. No matter what happens, no matter even how it ends, God, you have won and we win too. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. And God, thank you for your incredible word. God, I just, I just, I just know even teaching this tonight, it, it just boosts my morale. It just makes me think that nothing catches you by surprise. It just makes me think of all the blessings that I have in my life. And God, sometimes we, we really do. We dwell on the negative 
way too much. So God, I pray that maybe even between now and Sunday, we will just list the blessings, that we will name them one by one. And God, I think we will see what a wonderful, wonderful God you are. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. And God, thank you that we are going to a forever home called heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.